My name is Ron Aaron, and I'm the creator of Aeth, a cross-platform, secure, robust, cost-effective, extensible, and modern programming language and development environment. Today I'd like to talk about factorization as used in Aeth. What do we mean by factorization and why is it important? Simply put, factorization means breaking down a complicated word into simpler words. In Aeth, a word is the smallest executable statement, similar to a function in other languages. As to why factorization is important, we'll get back to that later. Let's take a look at a simple example. Before you, you see the word called sum of squares. It's a short word which takes two numbers on the stack and returns the sum of their squares. It's pretty easy to understand. Duplicate the item on the top of stack, multiply it by itself, swap the results of the second numbers on the top, and then repeat. Then add the numbers together. How can we factorize this? The key to factorization is to look for repeated phrases, that is, sequences of words, and move them into words of their own. It's helpful if the words do something which has a logical name of its own, as we'll clarify in a moment. Now let's look at how we factorize this word. Note that we took out the duplicate and multiply, and we put it in its own word, which we called square. The name already tells you what the factor does, and you also probably realize it'll be useful in other places. That indicates not only a good factorization, but one which will be used more widely. So what did we gain? Our original word now has fewer words, so it's simpler. We gain some clarity, because as soon as we see the word square, we know what it's supposed to do. This aids us in understanding our own program, which is a kind of self-documentation. Now let's take a look at a more complicated example. In this second example, we'll really demonstrate a different kind of factorization. If you look at the word x1, you see that we have a sequence of if-then statements. The person who wrote this came from a background, probably came from a background of the C-type languages, where if-then is the normal paradigm. In eighth, there's better ways to accomplish what this uh, bit of code is trying to do. What is it actually trying to do? It's taking a key value, which is it's stored here in the key variable. It's taking that key variable, reading it out, comparing it to a given string. If it compares correctly, if it's equal, then it goes and does something about it. And it repeats this stanza four different times. Now, there's a number of things that are not good about this code in terms of how one should approach writing in eighth. However, we'll concentrate on a, just a few of the items. In our factorization, this is our version of x of that x1, we call it x2, we're doing something completely different. There's not, not a single if-then in this entire word, and yet it accomplishes exactly the same thing. How so? We recall that what we wanted to do in this original word was take a value, compare it to a string, looking for equality, and then doing something based on, it, on the value that was retrieved. So we're going to use a data structure in eighth called an object, which is actually defined in terms of a JSON object. What an object is, is a key value table. It's like a map or a hash table or any of those sorts of structures. Essentially, you have a unique key. You ask the object for the value of the key, and you get the value that was assigned to that key. The value, by the way, could be anything. In our case, it happens to be a string. We take the variable key names which holds the object. We get the object out of it using the at. We do a rotate to bring the key, which was in the second place on the stack, up to the top. Dereference, in other words, we ask for the key 
the value pertaining to the key in the object, then because that word leaves the original object in the second position on the stack, in other words, it remains for us to use further if we want to, we do nip to remove the item underneath the top of the stack. So at this point, we've converted that p value into whatever the value was for that key. And then we call set value 2. Note that we used a data structure to do all the deciding for us. This is in general called data-driven programming, and it's something that eighth makes very easy because of the data structures it supports. If we go back to the original, notice that we've got, we, we duplicate a value, we store it into a key, and then we get the value out of the key, and get the value out of the key, and get the value out of the key, and get the value out of the key again. All that is very inefficient. Moving data from the stack to a variable and to, from a variable back to a stack is time consuming and wasteful. It would have been better simply to use a duplicate, a dupe word to duplicate the value if it's consumed here, which in fact it is because of the equals. And you notice that in our version, there's no variable at all. The other word set val2 is essentially the same, only slightly different from the original, because in the original version, the person used the stored variable value. Since we did not remove those values from the stack at all, we left them on the stack where they were, we don't have to t put them into a variable, we don't have to move them back and forth. So what did we gain from this? First of all, our code is much smaller. It's much faster also. It's not as wasteful of resources because less, less memory is actually used. But apart from that, in terms of maintenance, this is a much easier bit of code to maintain because you essentially just have a data table which defines the actions of this x2 word. You can simply change the data in the table. Actually, it's an object, uh, not a table, but still the same idea. You simply change the values there, and you change the, what the behavior of the x2 is without changing any actual code, simply data. And of course, needless to say, that data itself could be stored off in a database or read off the web or whatever. We hope this introduction to factorization has made it clear to you what the advantages are and why you might want to do this.